All right, Ron. So um, the topic I want to talk about is uh, piezoelectric uh, MEMS uh, devices are from end. Um, I choose a component of my research uh, that's most applicable, uh, anticipating the industry presence. So, um, and a lot of crazy other ideas. I'm not ready to let out of the closet. Um, so, in terms of uh, uh, RF, I definitely resonate uh, with uh, the comments uh, Professor Lee made earlier that uh, we actually uh, provide a platform for many different materials, uh, not just silicon, because silicon is really dominant in physical electronics in many other uh, domains. And as you can see, uh, piezo electrical materials has a very unique place in RF. Now, the application at RF frequency obviously is where it's, the biggest application is obviously wireless communication. If, as a matter of fact, the electromagnetic spectrum is the most expensive uh, commodity in human society. A slice of uh, radio frequency spectrum costs billions of dollars to, uh, to basically um, to acquire for, for use, usage over even like short period of time, such as a few years. So currently, what we, how we use spectrum is that we have uh, uh, federal communication community allocated different slices of spectrum for particular applications. For example, we have two G bands, three G bands, four G bands uh, licensed by you know Verizon, Sprint, different carriers, which they pay a very handsome fee for for use for the usage of those spectrum. And it's a fixed allocation scheme that you basically cannot use the spectrum flexibly. Um, and towards the future, we really have to. Uh, Start thinking about how we can utilize the, how we can utilize the spectrum uh, reconfigurably and more flexible, depending on the radio on, uh, ambience. And uh, to serve that application, we really need uh, high, uh, really high dynamic RF filters. Uh, filters is a component that are typically uh, connected to the antenna and right before the amplifier to amplify the signal. Its functionality is to filter out the interference. Nowadays, we have so many different frequency bands communicating at the same time. You really need those high performance filters to ensure the quality of your communication. Otherwise, there will be a lot of crosstalks between your wireless devices. And for mobile devices in particular, use piezoelectric uh, resonators and the filters. The reason for that is almost all electromagnetic devices scale with frequency, uh, sorry, scale with uh, the size of the uh, uh, wavelengths. At the R frequency, the electrical magnetic wavelength is, is so large that it's difficult to build uh, form factor attractive devices for uh, handheld devices. What you, uh, the alternative you have is really to convert electrical energy into acoustic, and then leverage the shorter wavelengths, lower acoustic uh, phase velocity to build resonant devices, high performance resonant devices. To, for, for particularly, in particular for these cases, would be the uh, frequency selection and uh, interference rejection. So this is a, a, a picture I borrowed from uh, uh, one of the leading RF company, Broadcom. It shows that in 2010, you have about eight to 10 filters in your smartphone uh, with switches uh, connected between uh, the filters and uh, the antenna. As you switch between 2G, 3G bands, you simply use a single pole multiple source switches to choose different bands. Now. Nowadays, in 2016, our phones accommodate 2G, 3G, and 4G bands. And this is the sort of uh, uh, newer architecture, as you can see. You have a diversity antenna and also a, a main antenna uh, for eliminating the multi-pass problem. And within this main antenna, you have low band, high band, each accommodating about 12 filters. So in total, your cell phone now is equipped with roughly 60 filters. And that number is only growing. Half of the cost in uh, uh, half of the total cost in making that front circuit goes to making the filters because you need those, and that's a technology that si uh, silicon and CMOS cannot provide because silicon <coughs> is a notoriously low Q system. It has a lot. Of, if you use silicon-based uh, lump elements to build filters, a lot of energy dissipated within the silicon substrate, and you won't. Uh, you have a lot of attenuation in in the process of filtering signals. So just a little bit cookie cutter back background on the filters. Essentially, it's a device that's frequency selective. You have a passband where you let the signal through with very low attenuation. Outside, you want a very sharp rejection to 
to, uh, to attenuate the interference. In between, you have a guard band, which you want it to be as small as possible. Basically, the roll off needs to be as sharp as possible so that you can fit in as many filters as, uh, as possible that to best utilize the spectrum. In addition to those specs, you also need the frequency stability, power handling, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the building blocks for these filters are uh, uh, devices called a resonator. Essentially, it resonates at a particular frequency, and uh, as you're going off resonance, uh, the energy absorption uh, gra uh, exponentially decreases. So the device can be really represented by this equivalent circuit, where the C0 is the static capacitance, uh, Think about it as the transducer that transduces the device from electrical domain into mechanical domain, and uh, uh, the RCM in series that's essentially your resonance uh, circuit. If you measure the response of this device, you will have a serious resonance and anti resonance. At a serious resonance, you have very small resistance, anti resonance, almost infinite uh, impedance. Uh, it corresponds to uh, the CM and RM resonating each other out in series, and the anti resonance corresponds to C0 and CM in combination resonate out the ILM. The loss of resonator is really determined by quality factor, just like any resonating system. You want a, a Q as high as possible, but because you're using acoustic resonators, there's an additional parameter called electrical mechanical coupling, which measures the efficiency, the energy conversion efficiency from electrical to mechanical domain. You also want that to be as high as possible so that your filter, passive filter, has a low loss. Just a picture to show that if you actually increase uh, the figure mode, which is defined as the electrical mechanical coupling times the Q, you can uh, drastically reduce the RM, which is the dissipating element in the equivalent circuit for acoustic resonators. You can, thus, you can lower the loss of the, of the device. So this is the state of art, what we have been using in our cell phones. Lower frequency, you have self-acoustic wave devices and uh, some special flavors such as temperature compensated saw devices. Uh, higher frequency, you have bulk acoustic wave resonators covering up to 5 gigahertz in the Wi-Fi bands. Uh, but there is no technology that you can, resonator technology that you can integrate multiple frequencies on a single substrate and then switch between them using some sort of a, a solid state switches. If such technology becomes available, it can certainly lower the cost, allow you to reconfigurably switch between all different kinds of frequency bands more efficiently. So this is our, our goal. So our technology also goes from material to device, then to subsystem. The material we choose is the leasing now bit. It's a very high piezoelectric material. We use a smart cut alike process to slice off a thin layer of leasing now bit off a bulk substrate and then transfer and bound it into a carrier. We subsequently micro machine the device into the laterally vibrating resonators. So in operation, the top electrodes will excite the device into lateral expansion and contraction, mode shape shown here. If you have multiple electrodes, the material under adjacent electrodes will vibrate 180 degrees out of phase, allow you to perform impedance matching to a 50 ohm system. The advantage of this type of mode is that the resonant frequency is set by lithography, essentially the electrode waves. As you can imagine, now you can electrical, uh, lithographically define as many frequency as the chip real estate allows, allow you to you know, do frequency agile front-end platforms. Some of the devices fabricated SM images. You can see that there's a shadow uh, in the edge window. That's because the device is actually suspended. Uh, some measured device performance. You can see that we start with the preliminary design with some sparse modes. We did some additional uh, uh, optimization. As a result, we can remove the spruce mode and get a really clean response, uh, almost identical to the device we simulated. Now, to put you in perspective, here shows the uh, quality uh, KD squared electrical mechanical coupling of 20%, Q about uh, 1100, and uh, in comparison to the commercially available devices, this is where we are. We already surpassed it by good margin in terms of figure mirror. Meaning that if we use our devices to build filters, we will have much lower loss. In addition, our high KD square will support much wider bandwidth op option. And I will show some, you know, uh, fresh out of the clean room results. That's pre-publication, and we use this device to build filters. Actually, that uh, that's better than the uh, the, uh, the filters you use in your cell phones. So this is the resonator we build. Uh, it consists of 
uh, five arrays, subarrays of resonators uh, in this uh, latter uh, filter topology. And uh, each array consists of from different from 12 and 24 uh, resonators, depending on uh, either series or, or shunt. And in total, you geographically have about 100 to 200 resonators working in tandem to synthesize uh, the desired filter response. And if you are no stranger to our clearing, you know anytime you get 200 devices working together, it's a miracle. <laughs> And I have, I have my postdoc to thank for. He was very persistent and believed uh, uh, in his research more than I did, and uh, we were able to get this to work. So it's another higher frequency device with even smaller feature size defined by e beam lithography. We were able to, this is, a, I believe this particular filter has 200 resonators uh, working in tandem. And you can see the response is really, this is the optimized fellow response, it's really as uh, as you know, desired by, by, by the uh, future front ends, you have a very defined pass band, very sharp roll offs into the rejection band, providing about 20 dB rejection between uh, the, the, the pass band and the rejection band. You also have moved the spruce mode to really further away. This particular filter works at 100 megahertz. We have other frequencies such as, uh, uh, for example, this at 800 megahertz and 400 megahertz, all showing comparable <coughs> performance, very low insertion loss, about 1.8 dB, very wide bandwidth, about 10%. So with that, I want to conclude. Uh, the work is obviously funded by uh, a string of DAPA programs, and uh, I think my time is up, and uh, welcome any questions. <laughs>